Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the next generation educational kit. Today, the talent gap poses a significant challenge for both the RF engineer and the communication engineers. Addressing and fulfilling the industrial demand is a pressing issue. In this webinar, we will show you a new toolkit designed to help you tackle this issue effectively. Enjoy the webinar. Hello everyone, my name is Ethan Ning, the co-founder and the VP of TMY Tech. This is the agenda for today's webinar. We're going to cover a lot of topics, including 6G. We talk about the issue and challenge on talent cultivation and what is the solution that will be proposed, hands-on experience and demo. 6G is coming soon. This is a new era of mobile connectivity, many the way is still the heart of 6G along with the upper B band. Let's have a look over those bands. First, let's look at the B band. Ranging from 1 to 6 gigahertz, this is already the backbone of current 5G deployment. They provide wide area communications with advanced MIMO capacity. Moving up, the upper B bands spanning from 6 to 24 gigahertz were introduced with 5G. At the best. This band, also called FR3, it offers additional capacity and serving as an alternative to mini middleweight bands. The mini middleweight bands, ranging from 24 to 61 gigahertz, that this is defined in 5G FR2, providing large bandwidth and introducing sensing capabilities which is crucial for 6G applications. Lastly, the terahertz, that this is a extremely high frequency. Research a group are very interested in this, but it's not yet been the mainstream of mobile communications. Gather all these advancements of sharing the future and unprecedented connectivity and innovation. So we, we believe that mini middle wave is the driving force behind the next generation of innovative applications. This technology not only enhances communication speed, but also unlock new possibilities for sensing and connectivity. As we impress this uh, advancement, we are setting the stage for the future applications. Autonomous driving, non-terrestrial communications, remote surgery, defense, logistic, retail, and even AR, VR. Let's review the momentum has been already created since 5G for many middleweight applications. One of the key application is fixed wireless access, WA, which leverages advanced mini middle wave base array, array antenna technology. To achieve kilometer scale coverage, this development positions a fixed wireless access as the wireless fiber for home connectivity, offering superior performance comparable to traditional fiber optics. Moreover, the use of massive MIMO technology enhances both the FWA and the mobile broadband service pushing the boundaries of communication range and the capacity. Network slicing further allows for differentiated performance and catering to new and advanced use case that is demand high precision and reliability. As we continue to explore transformative potential of mini middleweight technology, let's pay some attention on 6G NTN or non short network. This network promises a more efficient, stable, and seamless connectivity, building on the momentum established by 5G millimeter wave. So, uh, as you can find, there's a lot of uh, hot topics on software-defined satellites, 
or reconfigurable ESA, which is electronic steering array antenna are becoming mainstream. Enabling dynamic adaptability to different orbit, high altitude platform stations or apps is also is getting more popular as a solution served between satellite and the ground sector. Those innovations are propelling us into a future where simply high performance connectivity is the reality for everyone, everywhere. Before diving into the solution, it's crucial to understand how important of talent cultivation in leading tomorrow's innovation. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, between 2016 and 2024, the tech industry is projected to face a shortage of 6 million engineers. This talent gap presents both a challenge and an opportunity. It's a call to action for us to invest in education and training that will equip the next generation engineer with a skill needed for future wireless communications. Let's look at the challenges in teaching. First, the complexity of the subject, like a signal processing to array antenna and beamforming, coupled with the lack of practical teaching set and the high cost of mini wave hardware presents obstacles for both educators and the learner. So uh, at TLI Tech, we are excited to introduce the next gen wireless education kit to resolve the, the issues that's raised. This practical toolkit is crafted to help educators and students to explore and understand mini middle wave technology in depth. This solution includes a full source of hardware, software, and a cutting edge courseware tailored for 5G, 6G, and even non terrestrial networks, NTN. Our goal is to democratize the access to mini middle wave technology by providing affordable hardware that makes learning both accessible and engaging. The Next Gen Wireless Education Kit empowers not only educators uh, to keep pace with the latest technology, like a 5G, 6G, or for even for future technologies. It is also equips the student with the skill needed for future. With a toolkit like a mini mini wave dev kit and a UD kit, now it's time to delve into the solution. Next gen Wallace education solution. There are two kits, mini mini wave dev kit and the UD kit. As you can see, black box and the white box. The mini video wave dev kit is equipped with a 5G FR2 beamformer, a patch array antenna, a 28 gigahertz continuous web source, and a power detector. These components are essential for hands-on learning in mini video wave technology, beamforming, and so on. Complementing to this is the UD kit. UD stands for up-down converter. So this UD kit includes two down converters along with the signal generator place the row as LO, local oscillator. This kit provides a comprehensive platform for educators and students to engage with the cutting edge wireless technologies in a practical and accessible way. The next year wireless education solution includes hardware, software, and courseware. Let's start um, with the hardware. Our Array Antenna Kit operates at 28 GHz and it includes a beamformer with a 6-bit base shifter and amplifier covering from 20 to 40 GHz with a 15 dB gain and a signal source ranging from 26.5 to 29.5 GHz and a power detector spanning from 0.1 to up to 40 GHz. Additional we provide the frequency converters along with the signal generator, while crucial for hands-on understanding of how mini video wave works. On the software side, we provide a GUI along with the API. The GUI is a very intuitive user interface for you to control the devices. The API is compatible with multiple engineering languages that 
that we are going to introduce later. On the course waiter side, we offer two options. The first one is Mini Video Wave 101. It covers essential topics like a link budget, interference, beam forming, and many, many so on. For those who are interested in non-terrestrial network or NTN, and IoT communications, we offer this optional module on VCH and LDPC encoding, DVB-S2 channel, receiver simulation, and network. This comprehensive package not only provides the tools necessary for theoretical learning, but also emphasizes the, the practical applications, preparing for the students for to handle the real-world challenges in wireless technology. Here is a hardware list with the photos. As you can see, there we create the devices. Uh, it looks really nice and easy to use. Our millimeter beamformer GUI, we call it TMX Lab Kit. An intuitive interface for controlling the phase and the amplitude of each RF port. It enables precise beamforming capability. This GUI connects to B board through LAN pool. Likewise, the GUI also can be used to control the frequencies of UD kit. Additionally, our API supports multiple engineering languages such as NetView, Python, D Sharp, C, and so on. We even offer a demo website to show you how this nice GUI is working. Now I'm excited to present how we can build a complete wireless testbed by integrating two kits together to create, to create a robust system for hands-on learning and, and experimental purpose. The system architecture begins with the baseband processing, which is uh, facilitated by software defined radio, SDR. So NI USRP can be uh, an excellent option for this. This is a foundation where digital signal processing takes place, allowing for flexibility and uh, adaptability in various wireless communication scenario. It's programmable. Next, we have an up-down converter, which up-convert the baseband signal to, R to RF. So this component is connected to the UD board, ensure efficient signal processing and the management of uh, for uh, in millimeter wave band. The RF from end part is the heart of our testbed. Consisting of B board, in receiver side, we have Coco antenna along with the amplifier. So this setup is designed to handle, to handle millimeter wave RF signal providing amplification and the directional transmission capabilities. As you can see, there is a shared local oscillator is used to maintain synchronization across the TX and RX. And so this shared resource is crucial for coherent signal processing and transmission. On the receiver end, there is a down converter to translate the high frequency back to the baseband. The, the signal will be further processed by the SDR. It's time to get hands-on experience. Our next-gen education kit offers a comprehensive courseware, including two parts, Beamforming 101 and the NTN IoT Communications, which is an optional module. In Beamforming 101, we cover the basic of RF theory, including link budget, channel gain, interference in either conductive or in radiation method, OTA. We cover uh, the theory behind beamforming and the beam steering, we also educate students how to measure beam pattern. In NTN optional module, this course will cover encoding, modulation, channel simulation, DVBS2, and so on. And welcome to Beamforming 101, a crucial component of our next gen education kit, which is we, we decide to provide a solid foundation in RF. In today's high frequency communication landscape, Understanding beamforming is essential, especially as we move toward 5G FR2 minimum wave bands, where array antenna plays an important role in overcome the path loss. This course begins with the basic of RF knowledge, 
powering link budget calibration and gain measurement. These, these fundamentals are super important for a student to grasp uh, the complexity of beam forming and beam theory. So students can engage in experiment to explore the theory and how the beam can be measured. So it is also important for students to understand the inter interference uh, of EM wave. So either constructive or destructive interference experience in either conductive or OTA method. Of course, beamforming in the beam steering. Uh, we also offer receiver gain and the phase alignment and so on. So in this beamforming 101, students can definitely learn a lot. Let me give you an example that I captured from the lab number five from the course where. So, so this lab is about a beamforming and a beam steering. The objective of this lab is to help students to grasp the beam steering and to study the fundamental principle and the equations behind. And after that, the students can decide their own beam pattern. And so they can steer the beam on their own. We offer a step-by-step -step guideline so students can follow so and see how it works, what should be expected. The students can synthesize the beam by putting the calculated phases difference to each element, each antenna element and then measured it. So all this happened in a very, with a very affordable hardware, including beamformer, array antenna, power detector, and omnidirectional antenna, and the fixture amplifier. So this really uh, will offer us a great uh, learning kit for the students. So let me give you a quick example. In this example, uh, originally we emit the beam in zero degree, which is a bore side, and we take the measure over the power. So we measure minus 11 something in this foresight, and then we steer the beam. Uh, now we rotate the device physically to somewhere, uh, for example, this 30 degree, but we take another measurement. All right, so now the power was, is down to minus 17, almost uh, 18. The, um, students can decide the beam pattern to steer the beam back to bore side. All right, so after the students applying the phase differences, again, minus 11 dBm is absurd. So that really gives students a, a good way, a very intuitive way to get a hands-on experience, right? Let's explore the theory behind beam forming that a student can learn. So uh, focusing on the relationship between array antenna theory and the beam direction. Using this next-gen education kit, the student can calculate the phase difference and to synthesize beams, understanding uh, parameters like the angle, beam angle, and distance between the antenna elements, influence beam direction, and effectively to decide that the right beam to overcome the, the beam steering problem issues that I showed in previous slides. So let's look into this uh, optional course where module, the NTN IoT. So the, in this course, we like to offer uh, the principle of encoding and uh, modulation in modern communication system. Our course leverage MATLAB based uh, labs to teach students about BCH and LDPC encoding, crucial for advancing global connectivity through 60 NTN based satellite communication. This next generation technology aims to diffuse network and enhance the worldwide communication cap uh, capabilities. So we will dive into the basic principle of modulation scheme. Yeah, for example, it's 16 APSK by using MATLAB. Additional Students will learn about the principle of DVBS2 waveform. They they will have the experience to to see how use how to use USRP to generate the DVBS2 waveform and set up an end to end experiments with the next gen wireless education kit to explore the application of DVBS2. A real millimeter wave frequencies interference management is an, another key topic where students will simulate interference and using MATLAB and talk about um, strategies like the multicolor frequency, 
reuse, and the pre-coding techniques to manage interference. These skills are essential for optimizing satellite communication network. The course also covers technologies to be explored for uh, 6G NTN, including satellite communication standard, Earth to space, or even intersatellite uh, communications, and the communication payload technologies and such as an antenna and phase array technology, and so on. So by understanding these component, students will gain insight into a typical satellite communication network architecture, including satellite internet systems, the core network, G node B, and so on. So let's uh, delve into the setup for this uh, NTN uh, end to end connectivity experiments. Our platform features a DVB end to end, a some physical communication system that supports or encoding and decoding modes in DVB S2. This setup enables real time signal processing, including modulation, demodulation, encoding, decoding, and synchronization, and many so on, ensuring comprehensive learning and experience. And this DVB S2 transmitter technology support various modulation schemes, such as BBSK, QBSK. APSK, 16 APSK, and, and so on. The students can perform real-time measurement of modulation, EVM, aero vector mag magnitude, and physical layer. So even they, they can have the experience on bit error rate or a link of uh, the block error rate in either physical layer and, and, and the link layer. Compliance with the DVBS2 standard. Moreover, the system is customized for secondary development, uh, providing students with a uh, flexible and a robust platform for innovation. All right. So let me give you an example that I captured from the lab, lab number nine for this optional module. The students will engage with uh, this end to end DVBS2 testbed set up um, along with uh, USRP and our next gen education kit. So this involves uh, the processor for both the transmitter and the receiver. All right. So whenever there's, there are two map app programs to process a uh, one for TX, one for RX. So whenever we align both TX and RX, that uh, we are able to see the spectrum and the constellation diagram can be seen clearly from the, the, the application. As a key component of this setup, it, it's, it's about a USRP. So USRP receives a DVBS2 signal and it transmits them converting baseband signal to low band RF so that, that our low band RF can be upconverted into millimeter waveband with uh, our next gen education kit. This provides a flexibility in bridging software simulation to the real-world application. So uh, all the setup here are super important to offer students um, with the necessary hands-on experience. Now you understand how Next Generation Education Kit work with uh, the courseware. You already obtained some hands-on experience. Now I'd love to share further with you with uh, this kit, it's not only about these two courses, we can explore more for the future technologies with the kit. Now let's look at the 6G ISAC or J or JCAS, uh, which is, stands for Joint Communication Sensing or Integrated Sensing and Communication. They refer to the same thing. This technology is uh, pivotal for 6G as it combines communications with environmental sensing allowing for both data transmission and environmental data collection through a shared infrastructure. So when we talk about integrated integration in ISAC, that implies a different level of integration, such as sharing sites, we, we share a spectrum, or even we can share hardware. Ultimately, we, we like to reuse waveform and the signal. These integrations enhance efficiency and the functionality. The 3GPP technical reports outline about uh, up to 32 ISAC use case, including uh, for unmanned aerial vehicle UAVs. Now, in this scenario, covers transportation, 
automotive industrial, logistic, and mobile network performance. This application highlights uh, the versatility and the potential of a JCAS or ISAC in various sectors. So our work with the GNU Radio and uh, Next Gen Wireless Education Kit demonstrate the practical applications uh, for radar. So uh, there's a lot of potential applications for radar sensing, uh, range to range, uh, measure the range, velocity, and the direction. Also to detect the motion or even the radar can be used for collision avoidance, vital signal detection, and many so on. So through this uh, advancements, ISAC technology really promised to revolutionize how we proceed and interact with the environment. Our, our hardware, along with uh, Google Radio, radar sensing application, you will see this in demo section. It's really an uh, interesting demo. And we believe this can offer students uh, an extra value in addition to the two courses, two course where we just introduced. In TMI Tech, the innovation never stops. We are going to roll out a solution for a small deployment, reconfigurable intelligence service, RIS. This 5G in our FR1 and FR2 coverage solution is optimized for R&D, for field trials and prototyping. And now we believe that this solution, the combination of the RIS and the next gen education kit will offer extreme values to the students. The students can learn how to optimize wireless signal propagation in smart city, for example. They also can have the experience, hands-on experience, how to dynamically adjust the reflection angle for to create hot zones or cold zones. You will have a chance to solve the non-life-side challenges introduced in mini-meter wave communications, enhance signal coverage for 5G and 6G deployments. Now let's highlight a success story from Longhua University, where the best are training and the wireless communication courses are implemented um, and transform the education for teachers. This program addresses extensive minimum wave hardware challenges and provides a detailed lab sheet, supporting a wide range of wireless communication experiments. The university are increasingly adopting this solution. With the, this success story from Longhua University in Taiwan, and integrating it into their 5G curriculums. So this enables practical learning experience in, in informing, being tracking, uh, which is crucial for modern communication technologies. So despite challenges like limited teaching material and expensive 5G equipment, this hands-on approach aligns with, with Generation Z's preference for experimental learning and making the radical classes more impactful. So we hope that the kit helps you. Thank you for your attention. So don't go, go away. We're going to have a demo section along with a testimonial from UK. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Rona Saad from the University of Sheffield, a uh, current user of Tech. So I just want to demonstrate in a couple of minutes why we have in kit how it's got to reduce the us in uh, the university of Sunday. So uh, we first have it here as a, a test bed uh, basically to use for educational and research purposes. It really serves as a, a very good tool for us to experiment with designs we make and to try to look at the system from a transceiver point of view in uh, fake watches as a millimeter way, such as uh, for the end gardeners or for learning with part uh, education and research. But currently, the kit is set up as uh, a beam former working at 28 gigahertz. It's a one by four array with four channels, uh, transmitting from this end and receiving from this end. So currently, without a proper line of sight, we can see that the power level is around minus nine dBm which is uh, obviously if we move the beam away, we can see a drop of signal level to minus 23 dBm. So as in Sheffield, we are uh, quite uh, involved in 5G, 6G technology. 
with our quality uh, millimeter wave facility and the new CG system that we have installed. We are really interested in to educating our uh, students and researchers to deal in technologies at millimeter wave frequencies. So with this quest with us its own, uh, students have been using it to understand the beam forming and how the antenna array is uh, basically developed to form a beam and power transmit and receive work. In addition, we brought some uh, projects going into the design of array itself and recently some of the reflective intelligent surfaces. So these are some prototypes has been designed to be tested with the developer kit itself. So I'll just show you a demonstration of two uh, examples. But currently the beam former uh, is set within line of sight at 28 GHz. So if I use uh, this surface, which is supposed to be uh, more of a transmit array, so I put this between the, uh, between the transmit beam formers and the receiver, you can see the signal level almost doesn't drop. It stays between minus 9 and minus 10 dB because this type of surface is a transmit array. Okay? Now, if I replace this surface with the equivalent of a band stop filter or a, st uh, a reflector array and place this surface designed at around 28 GHz, you can see within the line of sight, I can still see that the signal has dropped from minus 10 to minus 30 dB. So the Time Tech Kit has been extremely useful on its own as a test way to design and set some prototypes that we make at Schleffen. So it's uh, really of uh, good use for us as a more. Thank you. Hi there, this is Sean, a field application engineer from Team My Tech. Today we are going to demonstrate about NextGen, which can be upgraded to support millimeter wave communications and used for educating the next generation in the millimeter wave technology with the various software interfaces and the principles. So let's get started. We use NextGen to conduct a simple beamforming experience to demonstrate our hardware setup. We have an SDR to connect it to our, our computer for best band signal generation. And NextGen LO is provides to two UD boards and SDR for the missing. Then, a transmission and the reception are carried out through the B board and the Coco antenna. We used the LabVIEW software to configure our SDR for the transmitting and the receiving signal, provide the IF signal, and we only have to adjust the outputs, the IF signal, the power, and the desired number of QAN to establish communication. The signal constellation it shows a signal performance in the results. By using our GUI to control the B-board and adjusting the parameters of phase in different channels, we achieve the constructive and the destructive interference as mentioned in the lab sheet. Ultimately, achieving the beam forming control. Here, we adjust the beam steer to 30 degrees, and you can observe a significant decreases in the quality of the transmitted signal. When the signal is moved back to the zero degree, and attempting to restore the communication, the signal quality improves once again. In this second demo, we use the next gen to interface with the GNU radio, the open source software interface for the radar applications. We utilize the SDR for baseband generation and control of the CW radar signal and use the LO as the signal source for the UD board and mixing with the SDR radar signal. Then we utilize UD boards for signal missing and transmission through the B board. While the processing the signal, receive signal with filter module along with the COCO antenna. The ultimate goal was to emulate Doppler shift performance and display the process shift signal on the disk block and converting the Doppler shift 
to audio outputs displaying the result through the sound card on this block when there is movement of obstacles. The sound will change accordingly, making it an interesting experience that further demonstrates the feasibility of this architecture, supporting the multiple applications from beamforming to radar systems. Alright, have any questions? It's time to kick off the QA section.